Hey team, welcome to Inside the Movie Photographer with Jason Boland. Today I'm going to take you through my Nikon Z6 and Z7 settings. I'm going to strip them down to the bare minimum and make this as quick as I possibly can for you. Now I've been using the Z6 and Z7 since they first came out on movies like Mulan, Extraction and the latest James Bond film. I've shot over 250,000 frames with the Z system and I've got to say I'm thoroughly impressed. Now my settings are for me. Um, I shoot predominantly action, um, but they will work for you as well. It's a great place for you to start, and if nothing else, it's a great place for you to see that you're being reassured that you are on the right on the right path with your settings. Now, um, let's hook straight into it. So, let's take a look at the playback menu. In the playback menu, um, all I do is I go down to uh, display options, and I have exposure info on, shooting data, overview and none so I can see the image as big as possible. Image review off, after delete I have show next, after burst I have show last image in burst, I rotate tall on so I can see the image as large as I possibly can, slideshow no need for that, and rating I don't use that either because I do everything in the computer later. So here we are in the photo shooting menu. Now storage folder I name my cameras after myself, Jason Boland, Z6 after itself, and B, this is my B camera. So the reason why I do that is um, so that you can keep an eye on what image you've taken with that camera. If you need to check anything out, you might have had a smudge on a lens or getting too much flare or, you know, just to keep an eye on which camera has produced which image. Same thing with the file naming. I uh, name the camera again. Uh, choose image area. I always shoot FX, but you know you can go down to DX. Obviously, if you want to, um, if you want a little bit more reach out of that lens. I mean, it is chopping into the sensor. I only use FX, DX, one one to one, and sixteen by nine. Sixteen by nine is actually really handy on a film set because that's uh, pretty much what the movie is being shot at. So you can you know cut out equipment straight away. Raw. I only shoot raw. Um, I know people that shoot. Um, RAW and JPEG, that's uh, handy for delivery for your client. I even know photographers that shoot JPEG because they love the look that it comes out of it. And that's a very famous photographer that does that in actual fact. Um, JPEG, TIFF, NEF, RAW, large. Um, and this will surprise you, I shoot 12-bit. I find that the 12-bit um, the over the 14 bit for me, it speeds up the camera. It seems to speed up the focus and um, just the overall performance. Okay, it's not exactly what you might want for color replication, but it works best for me. The raw compression, I always use lossless compressed. And uh, ISO settings, um, I do it all on the camera. I always have this turned off, the auto ISO sensitivity control. White balance inside, I set the Kelvin to match uh, the lighting that I've got outside. I'll have a tendency to go for auto, to tell you the truth. It's one of the few autos that I do go for. Now, set picture control. This is a, an important one for me. I only change standard. And as you can see, quick sharp I have on standard. Sharpening I have plus three. Mid-range sharpening plus two. Clarity plus one. Contrast zeros. Brightness zero, saturation zero. Now this is the important one. Hue plus one. I don't know what it is, uh, whether the Nikons are set for skin tones or um, where the sun is, just the geological reasons, but I find that plus one gets rid of any any magenta hue which you might get, especially if you shoot if you do shoot JPEG. Color space, sRGB. Active delighting off, long exposure, noise reduction off, but you know it's worth using in itself. High ISO noise reduction, I just have normal. Vignette control, I have set for normal. And diffraction compensation on, auto distortion control on. I believe they only work in JPEG, but uh, if I ever have to swing it over to JPEG for an art department shoot or whatever, I know that it's there. Flicker reduction shooting is off. Um, but I do use it on occasions, especially when I'm interior with LEDs. Metering, I only shoot manual, and I would recommend you guys only shooting manual. You have much more control over your camera. Uh, you're the boss, not the camera. 
So if you're shooting manual, you are controlling what the camera sees. You're not having a, a flare, you're not having, in my case, an explosion blowing out your uh, blowing out your metering. So yeah, shoot manual and work your systems from there. And it, not only that, but it'll help you see the light and you'll understand what the light's doing more. Focus mode, obvious reasons, there's so many. I'll use manual as well as um, AFC and AFS. The um, area focus mode, same thing. I choose different focus modes for different things that I'm shooting, whether it be action or um, a static uh, image or even um, portraits. Vibration reduction, I've got it set to off. I only put it on when I need it for those super slow shutters, you know, anything below 30th of a second. Um, the others are obvious here in a time, time air shooting. Um, I'm not doing that at the moment. Time lapse, great thing to have time lapse in it and focus shift shooting is off for me. Now silent photography on this is off. I will shoot the mechanical shutter as often as I possibly can. Um, the mechanical shutter does have advantages over the silent. The silent for me on a film set obviously has more advantages, but it can also pick up banding. Um, you can get a little bit of a wobble effect when you are shooting fast action in a big pan. So wherever possible I use mechanical shutter and that eliminates all of those problems. Now movie settings, I don't really uh, do much with the movie settings so I'm not going to be of any help for you there. Um, right, okay, so the custom setting menu, the autofocus, um, in this case AFC, I have it to release because you don't want your camera lagging up when you're trying to hose down some action, you want it to keep shooting and uh, that's the only way you're going to do that. Um, AFS, I have that on focus because you want the focus to pull it in straight away and hold it. Focus tracking lock on, um, I have it to delayed 5 because if something comes in front of the subject, I don't want it to flick to that quickly, I want it to hold uh, what I'm tracking in the background. And auto area face and eye detection, I'm loving this firmware 3 upgrade I tell you. The animal detection works perfectly. Face and eye detection works perfectly. Um, I'm, I'm finding that I'm using the face and eye detection more and more frequently, to tell you the truth. Focus points used. I use all points because I am very fussy with where I frame and so I want to be able to uh, tell the camera where to be and not focus points telling me where to be. Um, storing points by orientation, I have that set to off. Um, AF activation, I have that on for shutter. Um, limit the area focus mode selection. I do have it set to everything here so that I can have all the options at my fingertips to uh, choose whatever focus point I would like. And focus wraparound. Now this is a really important one for me because if you're shooting, in, shooting some action and you get to the end, you get over here to the right hand side and then the, all of a sudden you want to be focusing on the left hand side if you just press the cursor continue to press it to the right it's going to come back around to here so that's a really good thing for me and obviously you press the OK button in the middle of the cursor to bring the focus point to the middle of the sensor but I find the focus point wrap around is really really good for me focus point options um, manual focus on dynamic area assist is on as well uh, low light AF is uh, is on that's really helpful in the low light sets that I'm on now built-in AF assist illuminator now I have that off because on a film set in the dark areas if my uh, illuminator goes off I ruin the shot for the whole movie so yeah that's off uh, manual focus ring in AF mode, I have that enabled. So we get into the B's, uh, the EV steps for exposure control, I have it at a third of stop because I want to be as accurate as I possibly can. Um, easy exposure compensation is off, center weight area I have it uh, set to 12 um, and you know I could do it for, for average as well. In fact I might change it to average now. Fine tune optimal exposure well, I don't need to use that, but I can certainly see that it's worth having. So C1, shutter release button, I have that set to off. Self timer, you can set them to whatever you want. 
I would normally have 10 seconds when I'm doing a little selfie or something like that. And uh, power off delay. Now this depends. I have it set to 10 seconds at the moment, um, which is what I would normally keep it at. Menus at one minute, image review at four seconds and standby timer at uh, 30 seconds. But I can set that right up to five or 10 minutes, depending on how long the scene's going, because you don't want the camera to shut itself off and uh, make a noise or you know you have to restart it again. So we get into D1, the low mode shooting speed. I have that set at five, which is the highest, because I can still feel um, how many frames it's shooting and I can pull it up at one frame if I wish to. Now, maximum continuous release, I have it set at 200, which is the maximum, because you don't want to have your camera uh, slowing down or stopping at 100 frames when you needed the 101st frame. Um, sync release mode options, um, I have no sync. Exposure delay, I have off, but the exposure delay would be very helpful and is very helpful during explosions and, um, you know, a massive ball of light that's coming at you uh, so that it doesn't so it doesn't change straight away. It all depends on what you want to expose for. Now here we go, back into the shutter type. Mechanical, wherever possible for me. Um, limit selectable area. Uh, I have FX, DX, uh, 1 to 1 and 16 by 9. 16 by 9 because it's what we shoot in the film industry pretty much and that means that I can um, crop out gear that could be in my image without having to do it in the computer later. Um, file number sequence I have that set on. So apply settings to live view. I have that set to on so that I can see the settings live in my EVF, the exposure um, basically. Um, but it is handy to have it set to off at times too in super low light so that you can see what's going on. Um, but the exposure will be set to what you've told the camera to do it. So don't think that you're seeing something like super bright because you won't be. Now framing grid display off, I have it set to off as you can see. The reason being is that I like to have as clean a frame as possible and if I do need to line any verticals and horizontals up, um, I use the virtual horizon. Right, so here we are, D10 into peaking highlights. Now I set mine at 3 and red. I find that uh, they pick up the best amount of focus for me for the little beeps and the, the little flashing reds. And the peaking highlight color, I go for red because it um, is easier for me to see, but you might find yellow is easier for you to see. Um, view all in continuous mode. Now I have that on. The reason being for that is that if you have it on, um, it eliminates the blackout that you get when you're panning with an image um, for action. So you can follow the action a lot easier. Um, there is reasons to have it switched off, but because I'm throwing a camera around a lot, I don't do that. Um, flashes, I don't do flash, so we'll move through that. I have no help to you whatsoever. Now customize um, eye menu. Now these are the settings that I use mostly. Um, so that's silent photography, image quality, focus peaking, Apply settings to live view, uh, release mode, AF mode, um, AF uh, manual focus, vibration reduction, choosing the image area, the shutter type, the image size, and the white balance. Um, I have these set on all of my cameras at exactly the same so that I can get into them very, very quickly. OK button, I have that to reset. Shutter speed and aperture lock, I have them off, but uh, they're very handy to use when you do need it. Customize command dials, um, I pretty much don't do anything in these anymore. I used to um, change the aperture and the shutter around, especially when I used camera blimps. Release button to use dial is off. Reverse indicators are standard. AF speed is plus five. Now I do this in the... Um, movie mode because there is a word out there that it actually does speed up your focus in manual. There's other people that say it definitely doesn't. Um, I'd like to just hedge my bets and 
hope that it actually does work instead of it just being a, uh, a theory. But um, yeah, so I said it there, hoping that that's the way it will be. And so there you go. Set up menu. These are all standard, all personal settings. I really don't change too much. The one thing I do recommend in the setup menu is having time zone and date set the same in all your cameras, just so that you can, you know, follow your images when you're filing and stuff like that. You know exactly what time they were shot and which image was first and all that glorious stuff when you get back. Monitor brightness I have set to zero. I find that um, when I'm outside I don't need to make any changes but when I'm inside in a dark set I actually have to drop it right down um, to about minus three. So yeah and I do the same thing with the EVF as well which is uh, not available because I'm on the screen so there you go. Control panel brightness four but that's up to you guys. Limit monitor display so I only have viewfinder and monitor only. I don't have automatic and I don't have prioritize because uh, it can slow me down. Information display, I have dark on light clearly. I don't fine tune, no CPU lenses. Um, clean image sensor, I just do that when I need it. Um, I think that it's a good idea to probably put it on auto cleaning, but uh, if I see a little dust bunny, then I'll just give it a clean myself. Image dust off reference, I've never actually done that. But uh, anyone that does, leave a little message downstairs for me to uh, tell me if it's worth doing or not. It's be a good tip. Right, image comment I always have set to on. Um, I have my email just so that people can contact me if they uh, should they need to. Copyright information, obviously I have that on with my email as well. So same thing, people can contact you. Beep options, I have them always turned off because I'm on film sets. Touch controls I find very handy actually, so I'm using them quite a lot. Uh, HDMI, well, as you know, I don't use that very often, so not much point. Location data, I have as much of this stuff turned off as I possibly can, just for battery and airplane mode set to on. That helps with battery life as well. Connect to smart device, well, I've been doing a lot of um, SnapBridge lately, so that's been set to on as has um, airplane mode been switched off because I've been uh, using it to start my videos and stuff like that. I find SnapBridge really good actually just for remote controlling the camera on its own you know it's really cool. Battery I love that okay what have I oh no 91 percent well that's because I've been going through here. Now slot empty release lock this is very important you want to make sure that you set this to lock. That way you cannot take a frame without a card being in. You do not want your camera to be working without a card. Promise me you'll set that to lock. And then the firmware versions, make sure that you're always up to date because they make a big difference. Nikon are doing a lot of stuff with that. So um, there you go team. That's uh, my settings. And like I said, the most important thing for me is always shoot your camera in manual. If I had a t-shirt, it would say, I shoot manual. It's, uh, it's the most important thing. It gives you control over the camera, not the camera control over you. And uh, go out and have fun. Now these settings, like I said, aren't gonna be for everyone, but they're gonna help you out to get your camera set up and they're gonna reassure you that you're on the right path. So team, that's my settings for the Nikon Z6 and Z7. I know I don't change much, but I have them across the board on all my cameras so I know where everything is and I can get to it extremely quickly. Now, um, if you could subscribe, that'd be really cool and do the bell so you get notified next time I uh, do some of my turbo tips and uh, have a great day. Bye.